And mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about the differences in, in what you're able to learn from a biopsy result versus a genetic testing result, because that's something that we get a lot of questions about from patients. Understand, uh, when we take a, a, a biopsy, a needle biopsy, you're getting a handful of cells that the first step is the pathologist just looks at it with their eyes, okay? And if it looks like normal thyroid cells, that's the end of it. They call it a benign and they're done. Now, there also is, in some cases, they look and they see that there's obvious cancer. Um, for instance, papillary thyroid cancer has a particular look underneath the microscope. And if they see that there, they call it cancer. A lot of the genetic tests that you hear about are for the in-betweeners, where they see abnormal cells. They're not sure, is this really benign? Is this really cancer? Mm -hmm. Does it really look so abnormal that I can call it a cancer? But it also isn't normal when I look at it with my eyes. Mm -hmm. In that case, they'll start to run these genetic tests where they look at tumor markers, like this BRAF or um, others. Um, and those are the cases where we don't get definitive answers, we get percentages. There are a number of tests like the Affirmer test and the ThyroSeq test, and they give us a percentage. Like if you have a positive Affirmer test uh, that's suspicious, then you have a 50% chance of having a cancer. Um, but it doesn't tell us aggressive or not aggressive, all right, so we're still with probabilities and we have mm -hmm. to make decisions on that. Mm -hmm. um, but they can also run on those cells, some of those genetic markers like that BRAF. So sometimes those indeterminate nodules, those in-betweeners come back with a BRAF positive. Mm -hmm. Well, now all of a sudden, the chance of cancer goes way up, up to that 99%, mm -hmm. all right? So that's not the same as them seeing cancer, but genetically it is. So if somebody's BRAF with an in-betweener biopsy, but they can run all those tests on just a few cells. It's amazing that they can do that, but mm -hmm. in fact, that's what it is. They do these tests, they give us these molecular markers, and then we have to decide how does that impact what options we have. And for some markers, it makes some options reasonable and some options not so reasonable. And, and again, every case is going to be different. There's no way to generalize uh, you know, on a video well, you should do this or you should do that. Exactly. Family history would also come into line with mm -hmm. this. I have a family a uh, number of years ago. The first family member that I met turned out to be the 27th member of the family to have papillary thyroid cancer. My goodness. There are now over 40 family members that have it. They've had deaths of 40-year-old men in that family. Thyroids have been removed from a four-year-old and a six-year-old in that family because this is so aggressive. So, and that's just papillary thyroid cancer. Yeah. That's not medullary or anaplastic or any of those other bad ones. Right. right? And so there are these cases where it can act very, very aggressively. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, we do need to be very careful about selection. Now, having said all that bad stuff, RFA is really appropriate for small papillary th thyroid cancers that don't have bad molecular markers. And in a patient who will keep up with their surveillance afterwards. So I'm in Louisville, Kentucky. We get a lot of patients who will travel two or three hours or more to see me and follow-up can be difficult for them. And if they can't do regular follow-up, then it affects how we think about those options. When they live in nice east side Louisville that's 10 minutes from my office, then follow-up really isn't an issue. And mm -hmm. so maybe the options are a little bit different. So there's a lot of different factors that you have to think about. Mm -hmm. Molecular markers, locations, and that sort of thing. And that's why it's important to understand the information we're talking about in a general way, not in any specific sort of way. This yeah. is absolutely not a black and white issue. It's very nuanced and very individualized to each person that is going through it. 